John chapter 15. Starting in verse 1, it says, I am the true vine, and my father is a gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me I, I, as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself and must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you cannot do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is awesome. All right, the Bible is telling us, hey, bear fruit. And as you continue reading in that chapter, there's this fruit that will last. And this fruit is about helping others become Christians. You see, if you're here, if you say you're a Christian, it's not just you coming to church. It's not even you praying or reading your Bible. But as well, your fruit should be like, hey, I'm helping others become Christians. When was the last time you helped someone become a Christian? When was the last time you were in a Bible study? When was the last time you shared your faith? When was the last time like, hey, I, 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 I want to help someone become a Christian? Right? And here's the thing. This is very important because this is fruit that you want to feed to Jesus. Here's the other fruit as well. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5. Verse 22, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit... Let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us now become conceited, provoking and envying each other. There's the other fruit, the fruit of the Spirit. It's fascinating, right? There's two kinds of fruit, right? You have the fruit of the Spirit. And it's not fruits of the Spirit. It's just a singular one. So if you're loving, then you must be self-control. If you're gentle, then you should have peace. And then the other fruit of making Christians. And it's awesome because we see all these characteristics, right? All these attributes. And maybe we can lack in some of them, right? Maybe we can lack in kindness and forgiving and loving. And here's the thing. When you get a lot of people together, what's going to happen is you're going to hurt each other. It just happens. It just happens. Just give it a day. Just watch. And it's your duty, your responsibility to forgive one another, to love one another, to see past the sin. Why? Because you're, show, you're showing that you have the fruit of the Spirit. And some of us can be like, no, 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 bro. Like, you don't understand. Back in my days, I was like this. Like, I, I come from the streets. Like, I come from this type of lifestyle. I come from there. And I, it doesn't make sense because you're supposed to crucify that. Like, you're, like your old self should be all gone way long before you. Because the Bible says you crucify those things. And of course it says that you got to keep in step in the Spirit. This is awesome. We are led by the Spirit. And you have to understand, if, if you're a tree that bears fruit, you are Spirit-led. And I believe this is very important for us as Christians as you go through your stages of life, right? Like, you have to understand, like, you have to adult. You have to grow up. You have to get a job. You have to get married. You have to be disciplined. And guess what? This is the Spirit leading you. If you're lazy, if if you're a couch potato, right? You're not being spirit-led. Someone else is leading you. Some other spirit is leading you. And you have to understand, if you are a Christian, then you are being disciplined. 
right? Like, being a Christian is not easy, guys. Like, it, why? Because it's not just coming to church. Like, it's molding you. It's changing your characteristics. It's changing your lifestyle. It's changing your attitude. Like, and you're always constantly being molded. But if you don't feel the pressure, if you don't feel the push, if you don't feel the, the hardships and, and the Bible cutting you, then something's wrong. You're not, you're not allowing the Spirit to help you to have the fruit of the Spirit. You know, this morning, how is your tree? If Jesus was hungry, could your tree give fruit to Jesus? You know, would he go to your tree and find fruit? And, and could he taste kindness? Mmm, that's good. Or would he taste bitterness? Oh, man. Uh, sour. Uh, would Jesus curse your tree? Here's the thing, guys. Uh, as, as, the, as Christians, we can live this life, but just watch out. Jesus could curse you. He could curse your tree. If, if you're not presenting to God the fruits, then he may curse you. I mean, we just read in John 15, he prunes you. He cuts you off. So just be alert and be alarmed that he may curse your tree because you have no fruit. You know what keeps us from producing fruit? Let's go back to Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. What keeps us from producing fruit? Verse 15, it says, On reaching Jerusalem... Jesus entered the temple courts and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, It is not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill them. For they feared him, because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. When evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out to the city. In the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree wither from the, from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you curse has withered. We stop here. Oh, that's fascinating. Prior to this, to entering the temple, Jesus curses the tree. And then he enters the temple, and he is ticked off. He's indignant because he sees the temple as the tree. Yeah. It is the temple with no fruit. Yeah. Why? Because at that time, it was, it's been corrupted. Yeah. And so the, 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 the fig tree was showing the spiritual meaning behind the, what, the, the, the temple. Yeah. It's not bearing fruit. And what was going on, it's not clean inside. So, I mean, wow, what a scene, right? He, gum, he comes in, he just throws tables. Like, I, like, man, what a scene. Like, I, I, wow, Jesus, that's our core. Like, he comes, he throws tables, like, get out, like, you know, and, and he's indignant. Why? Because he wants righteousness. You have to understand the Bible says that we are the temple. And so God wants us to be clean and pure and righteous. You see, what allows you to produce fruit is you being righteous. You, you have to be right before God. And I believe that if we're not careful, we can hide our lack of righteousness with the kingdom of God. What do I mean? Right? The Bible says in Matthew 6, verse 33, we all know it. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And then we look at this and we're like, oh, wow, it's awesome. It's easy to go to church. It's easy to go to devos and midweeks and be around other Christians. But you lack, you hide your, your righteousness with the crowd. You care more about the God's church than his righteousness. And God is not pleased. You have to understand, in the Bible, God is willing to give up a movement. Because there's no righteousness. 
You know, you can hide your lack of righteousness by just seeking the kingdom. And you have to understand, where are you? I, I think, uh, you know, at times what we can do is we can become a therm- uh, thermometer. Yeah. Right? Even this morning. Like, I don't know if it's just me or, I, mean, I don't know. Like, I, I, there was a lack of zeal. Yeah. Yeah. Are we thermometers? Like, or do we go based on what the temperature says? And if you're that type of Christian, oh boy, it's not going to be good for you. Why? Because you depend on the kingdom to keep you faithful. And you don't depend on the righteousness to keep you faithful. You don't have to be a thermometer. You have to be a thermostat. Right? Like, if you're the only Christian here, are you gonna, will you give your full heart? That's awesome. But for some of us, like, oh, I don't know. Like, if my friend's not here, I'm not going to come. Oh. Uh, if, if I don't see my, my leader be fired up, then I, I'm not, I'm not going to give my heart. You see, God cares more about his righteousness than anything. Here's the thing. I think some of us are hiding in sin. We've been coming to church, and we're not getting open. We're not repenting. We're doing other things. We're being deceitful. And and, and nobody knows it because you're just coming to church. You're seeking first the kingdom. But God knows. And, man, God is patient. The Bible says God is patient. Oh, thank you, God. But if we don't know, God knows. And God will just take you out. He will curse you. I don't want God to curse you. I don't want God to curse the church. You have to be clean inside. You have to be, you have to be hungry for righteousness. You have to be hungry to get open, to be transparent, to be molded, to change, to repent. You know, for some of us, this is your favorite food, righteousness. You know, you love it. Like, man, I love eating this. I, I love walking with God. I love being righteous. I, I just want more of God. Man, that's awesome. For some of us, it's not your favorite food. But you still eat it. Hey, man, that's awesome. It's like vegetables, right? <laughs> Broccoli, carrots, spinach. Right? Like, hey, you know, when I eat, my wife cooks for me. It's awesome. And, and she slides some vegetables on the side. I don't want it. Hey, man, I got to eat it. Right? And that's awesome. Hey, I, I'm actually that type of person. I, I see the Bible, and I love the Bible. I love God. I love the church. I love my discipleship life. But I'll be honest. I look at the Bible, and there's some things I just don't want to do. I, that's me. Uh, like, I have to deny myself. Like, I, this is not my cup of tea, but I'll still eat it. Like, I mean, this, these are the good vegetables for me. And maybe you're there, and that's awesome. That's okay. You're denying yourself. And then there's a few who do not even eat this food. It's not on the menu. Like, you, you, you left righteousness a few months ago. You haven't eaten it. And your diet, your spiritual diet is noticeable. Like, you're, you're getting... Skinny and skinny and skinnier. You're, you're losing your nutrition. You're not eating righteousness. You're not being hungry for it. How is your temple this morning? Do you hunger to be righteous? Do you hunger to be right before God? If God were to come here this morning and, and take us all back to heaven, it, will he take you? Like, that's one of my greatest fears. I'll be honest. Like, it's called the fear of God. And I'm like, oh, snap, I sin. Like, I got to get open. Like, I, I got to make sure I'm right before God. But again, you got to be hungry for it. That is God's favorite food, righteousness. You know, I want to challenge us to not be deceitful. To be honest where you're at. To look inside and be like, how is my temple actually doing? 
Don't fool yourself. I've done this before. <laughs> where I've been unrighteous and still share my faith. Where I still go to church. Where I still talk this Christian lingo. Don't be that person. Be open. Be transparent. Be hungry to be righteous before God. Amen. Amen. Point number two. Hungry for more. I'll be hungry for more. Mark chapter 11. Verse 12. This is the next day as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. That's it. All right. I love it. Jesus was hungry. I love it. Like Jesus was a human being. Full human, full, full, full God. And he was hungry. Of course, we understand that he hungers for righteousness. But what else does he hunger for? Let's go to John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Verse 31. It says, Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, could someone have brought him food? Amen. My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Don't you have a saying? It's still for months until harvest. I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripped for harvest. That's awesome. You got to be hungry for more. And I love it. They, they come to Jesus like, Jesus, you got to eat something. He's like, I'm good. I already ate. It's like, what? Who fed him raising canes? Like, What's going on? He's like, no, no, I eat something you do not know of. And it's called hard work. Hard work. You see, Jesus is like, hey, my food is to do the will of God. Man, and not just do it, but finish it. You see, some of us, before the year, we had our goals for this year. How are those things going? Amen. Right? Like, oh, it's not. I only done three. Right? Not Jesus. Jesus is like, hey, I'm going to start and I'm going to finish it. And what work is he talking about? Well, he's talking about the harvest field, the people seeking and saving the lost. He's like, you got to be hungry to go after the lost souls. And here's the thing. Being there in that situation, helping people become Christians, you can get tired. Right? You can get tired. You can get weary. And there comes a point where you see other Christians do the same and you start to limit your servitude. You're like, well, I don't have to work hard. They're doing the rest. I mean, wow. I mean, you have to understand that this is the food that we must eat. I, I think we're going to grow a lot. We're going to reach a lot. Of, uh, you know, uh, we're going to make more Christians and the church is going to grow. But, but here's the thing. The church is not going to grow if we stop with our hard work. Right? A lot of churches grow, but they, they hit the ceiling. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because they, they get pleased with the numbers. Mm. It's like, oh, yeah, that's it. I mean, you know, we're in the hundreds. Yeah. I, I'm going to stop now. Whoa. Like, no, 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 no. Like, you have to have an indignation yeah. Yeah. to, like, continue to push, to move forward. Jesus had the same mentality. Yeah. Like, he's like, hey, no one's going to stop me. I'm going to go to my cross. I'm going to finish this task. And he's like, you too. The harvest is there. You got to go after it. But the thing is, is that, you know, similar is to eating food. Right? Like when you eat the same food, you get tired. Like, I don't know. That's, that's, I mean, it's just me. Like uh, my wife and I. We eat something uh, maybe like every other week, and that's salmon. And we love it. We love it. 
Like I, I actually cooked the salmon. So my, I told, I told baby, you don't cook today. I'll cook today. And so, and no, it's not bought. Already made it, man. I make it. <laughs> so I make the salmon, the potatoes, the the vegetables, and everything, and it's awesome. It it, it, it feels great. It's delicious. And, and then we make it. We get a big salmon, and we only eat half of it, and then the rest we eat it the next day or so. But then leftovers is awesome. But if you eat the same, if you eat salmon the same day every day. You know, you kind of get tired. You know, I I look at my dog. He eats the same food every day. I don't know how he does it. He gets excited. But but us humans, I don't know. Like you don't, you're not as fired up as you were at first, right? You're like, oh, I don't know if I want to eat salmon today. And here's the thing. That's the same way when it comes to a Christian walk. When it comes to the same purpose that you have yeah. to seek and save the lost, and you're like, man, I've been doing this for years now, and then the taste, you numb out. There's no flavor anymore. You're not hungry. You lose your appetite, and you don't hunger for more. Why? Because you get in a place of being comfortable. You're just like, you know, like get your floaties on and in the water and. You know, you get comfortable. And Jesus is like, no, 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 no. If you're spirit, like, get out of the water. Let's go. For us, we got to stay hungry. Every day. Every single day. You know, check this out in John chapter 6. John chapter 6. How long can you live this Christian life? Or better yet, how long can you be a worker for God? Right? I think it's very easy to just come to church. Just come to church, sing a song, say hi's, and then not live this Christian life throughout the week. And, and then actually go and share your faith, being in Bible studies, if you're visiting, you have to understand, being a Christian is not just on Sundays. It's not a spectator sport. We are all participate in seeking and saving the lost. Like, I, I'm, I'm not the only one going to be in Bible studies. You guys do the same. And, and so how long can we keep this up? Right? We get tired. Like, man, I don't know if I can do this tomorrow. I don't know if I can do this in six months. I don't know if I can do this in three years. I mean, there's incredible Christians all over the world who have been disciples for 40 years. 30 years, 60 years, 50 years. I mean, man. I'm only seven years. Like, dude, that's a lot of years to be 20, 30. How do you do it? How do you stay hungry? Jesus gives us the key. John chapter 6, verse 47. It says, very truly, I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. That's awesome. Jesus gives us the food, and that's him. God, that's God's favorite food for us. Yes, it's to go after righteousness, but it is to go after God too. He's like, I am the bread of life. Come to me, eat from this. And it's fascinating. He was talking about the manna back then in Exodus, right? Or you continue going on. And, and, and the people, the Israelites, they were fed every day. Just waiting for manna to just drop from heaven. They were eating it, free food. And it was the same food every day. Every day. Eating salmon every day. Right? And they did not get tired. And so God's like, hey, here, here's my manna. It's called the Bible. 
It's called the word of God. And you see it every day. You see it every day. You read the same scriptures every day. Right? So I was like, well, I read the whole Bible. Then read it again. And again. And again. And again. The moment you lose motivation is because you lack in reading the Bible. This is where you get motivation. This is where you get inspired in the Bible. Like, I hope that my, my lesson is not your, your quiet time. I hope my lesson is not like, oh, this is the first time I pick up the Bible and read today. Like, I, I, hope, I hope this is not you guys. But you have to understand, this is your food. This is what you eat. This is what you take. I, I, for some of us, I mean, we, we, we read the Bibles every day, and, and then we, we, you know, we, we, we don't feel hungry anymore. And maybe that's because we don't, you know, we got to change a few things up. We got to spice it up. We got to add some, uh, some seasoning. Yeah. Just don't put avocado. But you, you got to put some seasoning. You got to change it up. So a, a great brother that I, I, I truly admire because of his faith is Jay Hernandez. And, and, and Jay Hernandez, he's a brother in DFW. And he's been a disciple for, man, I think 30, 30 years. Sorry, bro. I don't know. Plan. But he says, hey, I read the same Bible you do. Like, I read the same scriptures. And he's honest. Like, there's been moments where I'm, like, stuck, where I hit the roof. Like, what else? He's like, I got to change it up. I, I got to change my times with God. I got to go outside and read and pray. And then when I get tired of doing that, then I go to Starbucks and read and pray. But when I get tired of that, then, then maybe I go do something else or sing to God or, or write a poem to God. Like, he changes things up. And in the same way, you got to, this is on you. God gave you the ingredients. You just got to, like, whip it, you know. And you got you to you make sure that you're cooking great. And you are responsible for your own salvation. Yes. For you to continue to feed yourself. To continue to change. If you feel like you plateaued or you hit your ceiling, it's time to change it up. Yeah. This is the food that you're going to eat every day. Yes. Some of us haven't eaten this for a while. Wow. Or starving. Yeah. And if this is you... It is time to repent. Yep. Yeah. It is time to change. Yep, if you're here visiting, you're like, man, why is my life like this? Why is it not going well? Because you haven't involved the Bible. Yeah. Or maybe you're like, I have the Bible, but I just, uh, I don't know how to read it. That's okay. That was me too. Yep. You got to understand how to read the Bible too. Yes. But this is your food. You know, for us, you got to eat God's favorite food. We got to eat it. We got to be hungry for righteousness. Like, I don't care if you baptize 20 people. If you're not righteous, that's, that's in vain. That's in vain. Like, uh, it's not going to work. You got to be hungry for righteousness. And you got to be hungry for the word of God. You want to stay close to God. And I believe as this church continues to be hungry after righteousness, continues to be hungry after the word of God, man, you have some spiritual muscles there. You're like healthy. Your skin is going to be glowing. But I believe this church will be a healthy church. Not because of what we do or, or eat, but because we eat the spiritual food. And to God be all the glory. <laughs>